Hi guys, George here from Zero Period Productions, and today we're talking about the newest expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online, Blackwood. The new expansion, as well as what we can expect this year from the game, was revealed earlier this week during a stream event over on Bethesda's Twitch and YouTube channels. Today, I wanted to touch mainly on what we can expect in this new chapter, which releases this June, but thought it would be good to go over some of the other content drops and updates that we can expect throughout 2021. For anyone unfamiliar with the current ESO content cycle, we get four new pieces of paid content every year. In Q1, we get a dungeon pack, in Q2, we get the expansion, Q3, a second dungeon pack, and Q4, a zone DLC. For the past couple years now, the four content drops have been part of a year-long story, telling an ongoing adventure over the course of the calendar year. In 2019, we had the Season of the Dragon, which took us throughout elsewhere and had us face off against dragons released after a long imprisonment. Last year, we had the Dark Heart of Skyrim, a gothic adventure across Western Skyrim and the Reach, as we confronted an ancient vampire and their allies. This year is known as the Gates of Oblivion, and is partially a celebration of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, which turns 15 this year. The upcoming Q1 dungeon pack, named The Flames of Ambition, will release March 8th, and will feature two four-man group dungeons. This will introduce us to the conflicts and stories that will carry us throughout the year. The first dungeon, The Cauldron, will be set in Morrowind, and the second dungeon, Black Drake Villa, is situated in the Gold Coast region of Cyrodiil. This coming June, we'll see the release of the expansion itself, Blackwood, and as the name implies, will feature the Blackwood region of Cyrodiil. This will include the city of Leowin as the main hub, as well as the Argonian settlement of Gideon, which hasn't been seen in any game since the Elder Scrolls 1 arena. While it wasn't depicted back in the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, in lore, Blackwood has much more Argonian influence and architecture, and while it is part of the Imperial province, the Argonians have a strong cultural hold over parts of the marsh. In the stream, the devs discussed how we'll see life from the perspective of both the Imperials of Leowin, as well as the two different Argonian tribes, one of which worships Mehrunes Dagon. The few shots we got of Leowin in this expansion look beautiful, and feels like a much more fleshed out and filled in version of the city compared to Oblivion's. Of Oblivion's major cities, Leowin always felt like the one that was the least utilized and underdeveloped, and I'm hoping to see that change this time around. Last year, we got to see how the ESO team designed their versions of Markarth and Solitude, both of which felt largely faithful to how they appeared in Skyrim. The team gets better at designing cities with each and every expansion, which has me excited to see their own depiction of Southern Cyrodiil. As it stands, this won't be the first time we see Cyrodiil in ESO. The base game includes a large section of Central Cyrodiil as the PvP zone, and the Dark Brotherhood DLC added the Gold Coast region, which included the cities of Anvil and Kavach. The Gold Coast is a really well done area, and seeing Kavach in all its glory is really nice after only seeing it in ruin in Oblivion. A large part of the Gates of Oblivion season of content will deal with Mehrunes Dagon, and his plot to take over Nern. The Oblivion Crisis of the Third Era was Mehrun Dagon's final thwarted attempt at claiming Nern as his own, but it wasn't his first. With ESO being set 800 years before the events of Oblivion, this is our first chronological in-game attempt at Mehrun's takeover. During the Oblivion Crisis of the Third Era, Mehrun's Dagon's fanatic followers, the Mythic Dawn, used Oblivion Gates and a Daedric Siege Engine to destroy cities. During the attempt we'll see during the Second Era, Dagon had made a deal with the now-deposed Longhouse Emperors, and created four deadly weapons known as his Four Ambitions, which have the power to ensure unchallenged rule to those who wield them. The CGI trailer shown at the beginning of the event shows the Mysterium Xarxes, which is likely to play a large role in this year's season of content as well. In Blackwood, the new public event will take the form of Oblivion Portals, and while there's no information on these yet, I'm hoping that we might see something similar to the Oblivion Gates from The Elder Scrolls IV. Obviously, the ESO versions would not be as long, but the idea of having us go into the Deadlands briefly to close the portal from within would be incredible, and a great homage to The Elder Scrolls IV. The Deadlands, Mehrunes Dagon's Plane of Oblivion, was announced as part of this year's content, and will only be used a little bit in the expansion, but will be featured much more heavily in the Q4 DLC. As is standard for all expansions, ESO Blackwood will include side quests, two public dungeons, numerous delves, and quality of life improvements. With each expansion, ESO typically adds something new gameplay-wise. In previous years, we've gotten new classes, the Sigic Order as a guild, and last year we received the Antiquity System, which brought a new archaeology system to the game. With this year's expansion, we're seeing the introduction of companions, dedicated in-game followers to join us on our adventures. I've been hoping for a companion system in ESO for years, 
and I've often looked at Star Wars The Old Republic as a great example of how companions can be done well in an MMO. With Blackwood, we'll see the introduction of this new system with two potential companions, a male Imperial and a female Dunmer. While we didn't get to see much gameplay with them, the devs did give a brief overview of what we can expect from this new system. Companions will be usable most of the time, although it has been confirmed that companions will not be able to join you for PvP. While it wasn't confirmed or denied, I think it might be safe to say that we shouldn't necessarily expect companions during large group content such as Trials, especially since it could throw off balancing for some of those encounters. It would also be a bit weird to go into a 12-man trial and see multiple of the same companion walking around. During the stream, the devs confirmed that you will be able to give your companions gear, as well as level them and choose their abilities, giving a sense of customization for them. They'll be able to provide extra damage or healing, which will be useful for players as they level. What has me the most excited is that each follower will have their own dialogue and their own personal quests. While there's only two companions to start, I hope we see more introduced in future DLCs. That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few companions introduced through the Crown Store as well in the future. For players who don't plan on buying the DLCs or expansion, there will still be numerous updates and reasons to play. All players will have access to in-game events throughout the year, including the Mid-Year Mayhem PvP event this January. And typically, we have a new event each and every month. This year, one of the big focuses behind the scenes is a focus on performance for the game, which takes a couple different forms. The first of which is a major server overhaul. ESO is still running on its original servers since launch, and this year they'll be transferring over to a new framework and hardware. My best bet is that this might be in conjunction with Microsoft's upcoming purchase of ZeniMax, which would allow them to take advantage of some really top-notch server architecture and hosting. The second change that will impact performance to a degree is a major overhaul to one of the in-game leveling systems, the Champion Point system. As many players of the game know, once you reach level 50 on a character, you unlock Champion Points, a secondary leveling system that allows you to gain buffs and different passives for your character. In the current system, each passive creates another check that the game has to calculate during combat. This means that with each attack or ability, the game has to very quickly check for various effects in the way in which it can impact your stats. Given the faster paced nature of ESO's combat, this can be a bit taxing on the game. This new system, or Champion Points 2.0, has been built to create more fluidity and less checks in-game. From a gameplay perspective, the new Champion Point system has been completely overhauled, organizing all of these perks into three different constellations. As time goes on, the devs will flesh out the constellations more, creating more long-term investment and ways to improve your character as time goes on. The current max Champion Point rank of 810 is being raised to a whopping 3600, although the XP gain will be changed as well to reflect this new max. With the current XP gain, it would take forever to hit 3600, and very few players, if any, would ever see it. All in all, I really enjoyed the showcase, and a lot was shown off in regards to this year's season of content. Last year, there were a lot of concerns about performance, and I think part of these problems can definitely be attributed to the shift in dynamics of working from home. While the devs are definitely more used to it now, it was a huge adjustment period, and has been for countless studios this past year. The team at ZeniMax Online is still working from home, and it still carries its own challenges. The focus on improving stability and performance will be integral to keeping existing players coming back, and help to set a good first impression for new players who join the game for this next year of content. ESO Blackwood is available for pre-order across all platforms, and the next-gen upgrades for the console versions of the game are still in development. If you're ever interested in learning more about The Elder Scrolls Online, or have questions about it, make sure to come by my streams over at twitch.tv slash zero period productions, where I stream ESO at least a couple times a week. I'll also be streaming each of the new content drops throughout the year at their respective release dates. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.